Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. We're so happy to have you join us on the second week of December. Mark Kuntz, Andy Lynch joins me. I'm Jennifer Beck and uh, it's getting colder out and it's getting Christmassy. Yeah, what a great job decorating the set by Pam Martin. Mm -hmm. She did a fantastic she job. Did. And that Christmas music finally feels like it belongs. Right. Right. Well, we're okay with it now. Yes. <laughs> but not in October. <laughs> well, we are getting very close to the, uh, the actual day of Christmas. Are you all ready? Have all your shopping done? <laughs> Is it Christmas Day yet? <laughs> no, we've still got time. But coming up on today's show, we're going to tell you about a big event coming to Lima for area youth and young adults. An inspirational story about volleyball player Linnea Clay, who hopes to make a difference not just on the court, but on the campus when she heads off to college next year. And Jennifer will interview singer Michael W. Smith. That's right. He was here in Van Wert for the wow. kickoff of the Nice Wonger Performing Arts season. Mm -hmm. It was a sold out show. Really kind of neat to talk to, uh, talk to somebody. Did he sing that Friends for you? He did sing Friends. <laughs> for he didn't you? sing it for me. He didn't sing it for me. You should have asked. I, 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 heard, heard. I heard he was singing it for you. We are good friends, Michael and I. I just call him Michael Smith because we're that close. He told I understand my, the former president actually had a little rhubarb with him about the use of the W. It is copyrighted. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that true? No, I just made it up. <laughs> rhubarb sounds good. Do we have a rhubarb pie segment? I think Maybe that's something week. we should do in, mm. in the future. Send us your rhubarb and we will make pie and we will judge which rhubarb is the greatest, though it's not rhubarb season. Well, you know, before we get started, we should let you know that one of the fun <laughs> things about our show is we want to do fun, exciting, interesting things. And if you have an idea for an interesting food segment or something you want to try to make him eat or some other make project that we might be able to do, <laughs> you like need to let us know. I would love to see somebody make him eat vegetables because he does not do that. Rhubarb's a vegetable, right? <laughs> if it's in a pie, it's no longer a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up today, we're going to tell you about one of the newest places to get quality clothing and sew into a ministry at the same time. Well, Let's start with our encouragement of the day, our scripture verse, and it comes from 1 Timothy 4, 12. Let no one despise you, your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Let's unpack that. How many different ways can we be an example? You saw the five different ones there on the screen. Maybe you could pick one out and say, well, that's that's one area that I need to dive into today. Maybe that's an area I need to focus in on uh, a little bit. Again, as we go through those, I, I gotta find it here, in love, in conduct, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So many different things that we can work on during this holiday season. We're, we're busy, but we certainly want to work on our relationship with Jesus in, in ways that we can be more like him and be a light. We see so many Christmas lights. Those are, are decorative, but we're truly supposed to be a light for the Lord. It's true, and you know, you don't have to wait until you're grown to do that kind of thing. That can start in your youth. Yep. And our Hope Focus topic for today is youth and their relationship with Christ. One of the ongoing things we want to do here at TV44 is survey you, our viewers, about the needs that exist in the community. And we regularly hear responses that pertain to the area of youth. Lisa, a viewer from Lima, responded specifically saying there needs to be more activities for mm -hmm. area youth. Renee from Marion believes there needs to be better ways to get teens more focused on Christ. National statistics paint a bigger picture. A USA Today survey, as well as a study by the Barna Group, revealed that 75% of Christian young people leave the church after high school. In a 2009 Barna study group revealed that of those who attended some sort of church-related events on a regular basis, earlier than the age of 12, that would mean church, vacation Bible school, Sunday school, etc. Only 50% of them are remaining committed church attendees once reaching adulthood. Clearly, it's not just church attendance that is the focus here. What we're looking for is a full-out relationship with Jesus Christ and a desire to serve Him. Well, that is much of the mission of Teens for Christ. You may have heard of them. They're headquartered here in Lima, and they're impacting on a weekly basis hundreds of teens. Their vision, though, is not just those locally. They have an international ministry that has a heart to see young adults everywhere truly turn into long-term committed followers of Christ. Well, coming up in March, Teens for Christ is hosting a major event, including national speakers and musicians. It's called Converge. Tickets went on sale just last month. Well, Mark sat down with Buck Sutton and Paul Paschal and talks Converge. Every major revival or movement started with just a few people, young people, people who had an anguish to see God impose His will into the very heart of society.
My senior year of high school, I knew that God was calling me to do something for Him. I knew going to youth group and going to boot camp and different things that God had set aside things for me, but I didn't know what to do and I didn't know how to do it. So my senior year, I, I had this idea to start a prayer group at my school and we met every week and it started with just me. And it slowly grew and it slowly grew and eventually we had dozens upon dozens that went to this group, but when I left, the entire group dissolved and it fell apart. There was no sustained movement. It didn't stick. And so Converge, it's not about creating this short-term burst of energy. It's about creating this sustainable, lifelong movement to engage the world for Christ, not just Lima, Ohio, not just your high school. And we want to equip you. We want to empower you with the gospel so that you know what to do. So that when you go to your high school, you can reach everyone for Jesus Christ. And when you leave, when you graduate, your legacy will still be there because it's not you. It's Christ. And we're going to empower you to do that at Converge 2014. And it's going to be incredible. And you want to be part of the movement. Converge 2014 is just a few weeks away. Registration is underway. We're joined now by two of the members of Teens for Christ, Buck Sutton and Paul Paschal. And first off, Buck, just second year for Converge. First year went well, I take it. Second uh, year, you're ramped up, making it a little bit bigger. Oh, boy, I tell you, we are so excited about Converge because of the momentum that happened that first year. You know, we, we wanted to provide something for local teenagers and ministries and churches uh, where they could come to a conference, not a pep rally, but a conference of worship and being equipped to live out their faith in Christ. And then also, we've also seen we had kids get saved there last year. So it's, it's a multifaceted thing, but... Uh, we have so much more momentum than we did last year at this time, and uh, we're very, very excited about it. Paul, what, uh, what changes have you made from last year to this year? What, uh, what can we expect from this year's Converge 2014? There's, there's a few changes this year. One, we're bringing in more speakers. Last year, one keynote speaker, and this year we'll have three nationally known keynote speakers. Uh, we're also upgrading our worship band, so it's going to be a little bit more of a well-known band. We're also going to have 20 breakout sessions this year, a lot more than we had last year. And we're also moving the venue to the UNH Event Center, and it won't be at the Civic Center this year. But So there's a few changes, but, it's, but the core of it's still the same, and we're sticking to what we're, we're good at, doing evangelism, discipleship things. Yes. Digital Age is the, the headliner band? Yes, they are. They are the uh, band that used to be with David Crowder, mm -hmm. and David Crowder kind of moved on uh, to be on his own, and so the band kind of formed a new group. Certainly, Buck, Teens for Christ, your heart is in teens, in the high schools, in the middle schools, trying to, to grow the youth, and just, just some amazing things have been going on with you guys recently. Oh, boy, I tell you, even uh, since September 1, here locally, we've had 126 salvations, and, uh, you know, right now we're averaging about uh, 550 teens uh, every week coming to a Bible study here locally. So, um, boy, it's, uh, it's an exciting time to be in youth ministry. And, um, and it's happening right here. And uh, that's one of the things we wanted to do. We wanted to be in Lima, you know, have, have a, um, a, a ministry, but also this converge where, you know, churches, youth ministries can come together and we can have something really powerful. We're already having uh, people contact us from Florida, hopefully from Michigan. They're going to be coming into converge also. So uh, it's going to be a regional thing. The other thing we're excited about is we do this Operation Love Lima, where uh, on Saturday, afternoon the teenagers are going to be dispersed throughout the Lima land area trying to bless this area and uh, so you know uh, there are some exciting teenagers out there that do love God and uh, that are very you know uh, quality people. Paul what do folks need to do to, to get involved what's the, the registration deadline? That's great we're still looking for volunteers we have a website www.convergemovement.com and they can visit that website if they're interested in being a volunteer or if a student would like to register online we have dates and more information on there and so they can visit that website at any time and get more information. Buck I know you guys are in a lot of schools how many different schools are you guys in now? Uh, 20 here locally and uh, so you know we've expanded to Florida and Texas and, and Arkansas and we're in eight other countries um, right now internationally we're ministering to 209,000 a week and, uh, and that just seems to be growing every month. So um, it is, uh, it, it's an uh, interesting uh, problem that we have of, of growth right now and how to handle that. And then finally, once again, when's the dates for Converge 2014? It's March the 28th and 29th. That'll be a Friday and Saturday. And uh, so, man, we're, uh, 
we want as many people to, to jump on board as possible. We had over 50 churches involved last year, and our goal is to get over 100. All right. Thank you very much, Buck Sutton and Paul Paschal from Teens for Christ. As they are, they're getting ready for Converge 2014. They, they need your prayers, and uh, certainly more information available on the website, convergemovement.com. Matthew 5, 14 through 16, not only sums up the mission of Teens for Christ and Converge, but also gives us a reminder at how we are to live our lives. It says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That idea of being a light to those in darkness is part of the mission behind Linnea Clay's college decision for next year. She's going to play volleyball at the University of Toledo, but for Linnea, the decision is not just about what she can contribute on the court. Andy talked with this Temple Christian girl about her reaction when she got the offer from UT. Totally stunned. Totally stunned. Um, um, I'm very humbled about it. And uh, it makes me want to work harder. It really does. Um, I, knew I now have a new goal in mind, so I'm really excited. I sent him a, a DVD just for fun. It was, it was seriously just for fun. And uh, they saw me play uh, while I was doing club. I was played for Grand Lake. And they saw me play, and she really liked me. And then I went to go visit them, and that's when they offered it to me. Clay originally pictured herself in a similar situation that she enjoys at Temple Christian. At first I wanted to be in a Christian college, I wanted to be a small Christian college and uh, uh, I felt like God was closing the doors on that and then God opened up a big door to Toledo and at first I was saying, you know what God, I'm not going here, I just this is huge, I don't want to do this. But I felt like God really opened the doors and told me, okay Naya, you gotta, I want you to be a light here. The Pioneer Junior had a chance to visit with a current volleyball light at Toledo. I met Lauren. She, uh, she's a middle, well, no, sorry, an outside, but she's 6'1". And uh, she is the president of AIA, which is Athletes in Action. And I got to know her and uh, she was just a really good witness. And um, I just feel like I need to follow in her footsteps, I guess. Clay's been following in the footsteps of many area athletes by getting stronger fast. I love the high intensity of it. I love the hard work in it. I love um, them pushing me. And Clay continually feels the push by God to follow his lead. I'm now going through trust and he's been really pounding me on this. Like, okay, you need to trust me. You need to trust me in this. And I'm like, all right, God, this is yours. I'm going to do it. So that's why I'm going to Toledo, because I'm going to trust him in this. Thank you, Andy. Some powerful testimony there from Linnea. Best of luck of her, to her in her future. Now, of course, there's lots of Christmas festivals taking place all over the region and other great things that take place only this time of year. Something new to the region, the Veterans Freedom Flag gift shop. Of course, the Veterans Freedom Flag monument located on Buckeye Road in Lima, but a special right now for the Christmas season is the gift shop located in the museum, featuring screen printed t-shirts, caps, dog tags, mugs, flag desk sets, and so much more. Portion of sales does go to help support the Veterans Freedom Flag Monument, Museum, and local Veterans Food Pantry. You can visit the gift shop any Saturday between now and December 21st. They're open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. For more information, visit UAWFreedomFlag.com. A local church is announcing the grand reopening of a downtown thrift store. Miriam's Closet is back open for business. All volunteer-run shop takes all its proceeds and uses them in downtown Ministry in Lima. A store featuring clothing for adults, children, also shoes and accessory. It's located at 34 Town Square in Lima. They're open Monday, Wednesday and Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll have more on Miriam's Closet coming up momentarily, but first let's take a look at some upcoming programming here on TV44. Of course, you can look forward to the Holiday Music Festival, which will air on Christmas Day, but you don't have to wait that long for some great Christmas music. The Annie Moses Band Christmas Special is coming back. Enjoy their awesome harmonies and incredible melodies of the family band right here on TV44, December the 17th at 1 p.m., and then again December 21st at noon, and then the 23rd at 10 p.m., but now it's time to talk fashion, but really it's not fashion that is the focus, but rather ministry. Jennifer is now joined by a representative from Miriam's Closet as well as some special models.
Well, Mark, I'm really excited to introduce these guests that I have here. Andrea Lamar from Miriam's Closet is with me, but look at this cutie that I've got on my lap. This is Elena. Elena is one of our models. We're talking fashion this portion of the show, but it's mm -hmm. fashion with a purpose. Andrea, tell me a little bit about Miriam's Closet, which is a thrift store in downtown Lima, mm -hmm. but it's not just your average everyday thrift store, right? Correct, correct. Um, we sell new and gently used clothing from infant zero to adults, extra, extra larges. And, but we only try to sell good clothing and the ones that we don't think are fit for sale, we will donate to a mission. We have some people that come and pick it up and then they disperse wherever the need is. So nothing goes to waste. And uh, our proceeds uh, help offset the offset. the offset our center at the square, okay. which is an outreach program. Um, it's also a life coaching. Mm. And we do have Celebrate Recovery, which is Christian based. And uh, anybody that needs help, they can come and just talk. We do have different speakers. And so we're on a donation basis only. We are nonprofit. Mm -hmm. We are all volunteers. And um, we just love helping people that mm. come in. There's so many people in need. That's right. They come in, they're hurting, mm -hmm. they don't have hope. Mm -hmm. They're lost. Yeah. So Miriam's Closet so, is a thrift store exactly. that anybody can shop anybody. in. We're going to show you some of the clothes in just a moment. You saw some anybody. on the screen just a little while ago. But the proceeds from Miriam's Closet, Offsets. unlike a business that is mm -hmm. a for-profit, are to, to go into the downtown ministry mm -hmm. that New Hope Christian Center started several years ago. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Well, as you saw on the, on the screen, we have lots of clothes, lots of great clothes in this store. And Elena is wearing one of these nice little... Uh, nice Christmas dresses that is available for purchase. And we got a few mm -hmm. other models that we'd like to bring on as well. Some of our staffers and our kids are here. So come on up. Um, so this is, Andrea, I think one of the things I really like about Miriam's Closet is this is a store where people can go to get quality name brand Ex items, right? Exactly. Some of them even still have the tags mm. on them. We have children's clothing. We even have formal wear really yes we do now all of our models today are ladies but you mm -hmm. do have men's clothing as well oh, too definitely, right definitely definitely yes we do tell me about when you are open um, we and are, the donation process the donation process we can um, take it at the store or we can take it at the church which is New Hope Christian Center on Beatty Road 2240 Beatty Road and our operating hours are Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, 10 to 4, Saturdays, 10 to 2. Okay. And we're hoping to expand our hours maybe later next year. Wonderful. Okay. Well, we are just a couple weeks away from Christmas. Yes. Do you think this could be a good place for people to come and find Christmas dresses or other, other important things? Oh, definitely, definitely. We have some wonderful items, wonderful. And we do uh, take donations anytime we're open. Wonderful. Or at the church, like I said before. Absolutely. And we do need no uh, donations. You do of, need donations. Yes, we do. All right, yes, so remember that not only is this a wonderful place for you to be shopping, it's purchasing great clothing with a ministry purpose, but they also are interested in donations. Correct. You can go to our website, WTLW.com, and you can... Um, you can find out more about where you can donate. We'll show you those hours again on the screen. We certainly want to thank our lovely models there for their help. Thank you also, Andrea, for not only coming here on our show, but thank you for your volunteering, for your, I mean, for being a part of that ministry. What an important thing you, you are doing thank for this you. community. Thank you very much. Oh. And I really enjoy it. All right, wonderful. All right, Mark, I'm going to keep this girl on my lap, <laughs> and I'm going to send it back to you. Thank you, ladies. Too bad Ben Reif overslept and wasn't able to be part of the modeling segment. Well, last month, the Nice Swanger Performing Arts Center in Van Wert kicked off the 2013-14 season with a sold-out event featuring legendary Christian singer Michael W. Smith. Jennifer had the opportunity to talk with the singer about his three decades in the music business, his future plans, and the real heart of his ministry. 
I'm here with Michael W. Smith, who's been traveling all around the world, but yet had time to come to Van Wert, Ohio, and entertain a sold-out crowd here at the Nicewanger. Michael, just so blessed to have you around here. Um, your ministry has been going on for decades now. How does it feel that you can use the gifts God has given you to just impact people in such a way? Well, it blows my mind, actually. Um, you know, there's nothing... There's nothing better than hitting in your sweet spot. You know, this is what I was called to do, and I'm just doing what I'm, what I feel like I'm called to do. And um, and then yeah, when gosh, when you, when you get the letters and and people said you saved my life, and I almost committed suicide. I heard your music, it saved my life. I mean that, you know, those stories. Even one of those stories is worth my whole career. You know, so yeah, it sort of kind of takes my breath away. But I love it. And um, and again, that's the. The clincher is to see how it really changes people's lives. And, and I still love making music. I'm probably more passionate about what I do uh, now than I ever have been. I really enjoyed watching your career, seeing how you have used so many different genres of music to reach people. Um, about a decade ago, I noticed when you really moved into the worship realm and have just so many churches and people have been blessed by that. Worship's still a big part of what you do? It is. And... Um, but I still like writing songs about justice and, you know, writing songs about the poor. And, you know, I think we have to, you know, to me, I just, it's, I hate to, to put labels on things, you know. And it's so funny because it, people say, you're the worship guy. And I'm going, well, yeah, that's just a part of what I do, you know. I've been a worship leader for, for 30 years, you know. So, but I didn't make a, a quote-unquote worship record till 2001. You know, the worship album came out, actually came out in 9-11. And... Uh, ended up being the biggest record of my career. So, um, yeah, but I love it because I feel like that's that's something else that I'm called to do as well. I love to lead people in worship. There's nothing better than that. And we'll do that tonight for sure. Now, you know, in this industry, it's very common to see people come and go, and you have been a mainstay. What What's the future for Michael W. Smith? Well, the future is I'm, I'm working on a new project. You know, you're, you know, the saying goes, you're only as good as your last project. And um, I'm sort of reinventing myself again and getting out of my comfort zone and doing some working with kids that I'm old enough to be their dad. You know, that's kind of, but you know, which was a, a risk for me. You know, uh, I sort of have this group of people that I love working with all these years, but this has been really good. It's it's paying off, um, and I think we have a new sound, and I still think it's Michael W. Smith, but it's sort of something new and fresh. Uh, at least that's what I feel. I hope hopefully everybody else will feel the same way, you know. Um, you know, I'm ready to take a little time off, you know. I'm trying to wrap up this tour. Uh, this is the last leg of the Worship Around the World tour. So so trying to do that and make a record at the same time and, and love on my family, you know. So there's just, uh, it's a busy time. It's just a great group of people, my band and my management team and just my best friends, you know, you just can't, you can't do it unless you got a good group of people walking with you. And I've been really fortunate in that area. That's wonderful. Thanks so much for taking a little bit of time with us and keep tabs on Michael W. Smith by going to his website, michaelwsmith.com. Yeah, it was really interesting to talk with him. Um, I've, I've interviewed a lot of different singers and I have to say he's very down to earth. Mm -hmm. He's just very humble. It's kind of neat to see that after all these years that he's been in in this business. Yeah, I mean, you think about how long he's been at, really at the top of the industry for Christian music. It, it's so difficult to sustain any type of artistic ministry like that, but I, I suppose it just goes back to showing how the Lord continues to find ways to use him. I did stop and think about the fact that how old I was when I went to his first concert, and I didn't tell him. I didn't, wasn't going to let him know. You didn't let I him know you, you saved the little guitar, guitar pick that he threw out into the audience I, that he caught. I, I informed him that I was very disappointed at that concert. It was an Amy Grant concert because... The Unguarded Tour? I was, it was, and I was <laughs> way up front at the front, and I can still remember um, trying to reach out for Amy Grant's hand, and I only had a chance to t <laughs> shake Michael W. Smith's hand, and I was so disappointed way back She's then. She's a stalker! <laughs> I went to that same tour in Pittsburgh. Did you really? Very good. I don't think we were at the same concert. Well, uh, were you in Pittsburgh? Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> we are trying to move on. All right. Well, we want to be so thankful for our fall campaign, which is underway. And, um, you know, it has uh, just been so encouraging to see how you are all joining with us as we prepare to move into 2014 with our ministry. And our goal is $150,000. Now, we haven't reached there yet. We're still moving on and we're trusting God for the way he's making it all happen. Certainly ask that uh, you would consider joining us in this campaign as, you know, 
it's a great time to do it right now as we come to the end of the year and you're starting to think about tax deductions. Your gifts to TV44 are tax deductible and already there have been some plenty of folks who have joined us to help our ministries, to come alongside us on our ministries, invest in our ministry, including the Brennemans from Elida with a one-time gift. Thank you very much. And a, a monthly gift from the Longs from Lafayette. So you can do a one-time gift or a monthly gift. You can uh, set up uh, an automatic withdrawal as well. Also want to thank Mrs. Marilyn Staub from Decatur, Indiana. You know, it's always encouraging to see um, to see the partners in from, from Indiana. We, in Michigan, there's a few as well. Yeah, we're, we're just, it's another opportunity for us to praise God for the fact that our signal can reach that far. God uses this tower to reach people, and we thank you uh, to the Staubs for your support. Also, Mr. and Mrs. Richard and Jacqueline Schluker from down in Salina, thank you for your gift, a monthly donation. Mr. and Mrs. Frederick Sharon Miller, Thank you for your gift from Finley. Also one more to get out there, Mr. and Mrs. Paul Schenk from Middle Point, Ohio. Middle Point, we're gonna be visiting a little bit more as the winter comes with boys basketball season and the girls, girls tipping off here. Well, as we come to a close, we wanna remind you of our verse for the day, 1 Timothy 4, verse 12, which says, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Every single one of those as Andy talked about earlier, you can take every single one of those aspects and take that as a challenge for what God would have you be doing in your life from this point onward and for the days and weeks to come. And that can be an encouragement to all of us, whether you are youthful at the age of five or if you're youthful in spirit at the age of 75, you are certainly making a difference and you, there are still ways for you to reach out in Christ. You know, one of the things I loved about that verse was it talked about youth at the beginning of the verse, that anybody at any age can become a part of the Lord's ministry. And we'll, Coming up next week, we'll have an update on Operation Christmas Child now that all the boxes have been collected and they've started their next step on their journeys overseas. We need to pick something to eat, Jennifer. What hmm. do you have in mind? Well, it is Christmas season. Uh, Christmas cheesecake. Uh Christmas cheesecake. Any good Christmas cheesecake recipes? If you do, send them to datebook at WTLW.com. That will come directly to me. And or send maybe... them to Andy Lynch's desk. At WTLW. He, does, he doesn't want the recipes. He just wants the cheesecake. I want the cheesecake. We're so thankful that you joined us. Be sure to watch again. Check out our website. Go to WTLW.com and we will see you next week.